Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Master Yi Jungle. One cut of many. Master Yi is a simple yet powerful duelist who's been around for years. Although his kit is very simple, he's notorious for dominating low elo games with his massive carry potential. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like and comment on the video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members in the community looking to improve, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. I hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Master Yi's passive is called Double Strike. Master Yi's basic attacks gain a stack on hit of Double Strike for 4 seconds, which stacks up to 3 times. At 3 stacks, Master Yi's next basic attack consumes all stacks to strike twice, and this second strike deals 50% physical damage, applies on hit attack effects, and can critically strike. If Yi's primary target is killed before the second strike, he automatically attacks another enemy within 300 range. Since this passive procs every 4 autos, it inherently scales based on your attack speed. This is a simple passive that defines Master Yi's kit, auto attacking to deal massive single target damage. Master Yi's Q is called Alpha Strike. Master Yi vanishes and becomes unable to act for 0.2 seconds, repeatedly striking up to 4 times. These 4 strikes can either be spread out between multiple targets, or hit the same enemy repeatedly. If your target dies while in your Alpha Strike, you'll return to the starting point. To add on to this, basic attacks lower your Q's cooldown by 1 second, allowing you to Q multiple times in an extended fight, sticking to targets. This is Master Yi's signature no counterplay button, which is not only used for extra damage, but to avoid skill shots, dash over walls, and to pull off some escapes in the right situation. This is a very simple ability, but by far the most important spell to understand if you want to succeed on Yi. Master Yi's W is called Meditate. Yi channels for up to 4 seconds, healing himself every 0.5 seconds. This healing increases the lower HP that Master Yi has. While channeling, Master Yi gains damage reduction, which is halved against turrets. Your E and R actives are both paused as well while you're channeling, meaning that taking time mid-fight to heal and reduce damage will not waste your other cooldowns. Lastly, Meditate also acts as an auto attack reset. In close call scenarios, Auto W Auto can be a quick way to get that extra basic attack in to reset your Q cooldown or to just maximize your DPS. Master Yi's E is called Wuju Style. Yi empowers his sword, causing his basic attacks to deal bonus true damage on hit for 5 seconds. These empowered autos do not interact with critical strikes, nor do they affect structures. This is another straightforward ability that pairs along with Master Yi's auto attack intensive kit. Although it has a long cooldown, the true damage allows him to basically shred through anything in sight. Master Yi's ultimate is called Highlander. Passively, scoring a takedown against an enemy champion reduces the current cooldowns of Master Yi's basic abilities by 70%. Once activated, Master Yi gains a huge burst of movement and attack speed while also making him immune to any slows or cripples. While active, scoring a takedown against an enemy champion extends Highlander's duration by 7 seconds. Keep in mind that your ultimate is not only an engage, but also a disengage. It's very important to fight off your ult's cooldown in the mid to late game, since Master Yi really relies on this to bolster the rest of his kit. For ability maxing, Master Yi maxes Q first, E second, and W third in pretty much all games. Keep in mind that if you're full clearing, putting a second point into Q at level 3 is the optimal setup for clear speed. Now let's jump right into Master Yi's best rune setups. To start off, Lethal Tempo is the go-to rune for the on-hit build that we'll discuss later, and in my opinion, the more consistent option. This provides Yi with amazing scaling and really strong dueling power, which is exactly what he's looking for. To close out the Precision Tree, Triumph and either Legend Alacrity for more DPS, or Legend Tenacity versus heavy CC teams. Coup de Grasse is the best option in most games against squishies, while Last Stand is strong if the enemy team really lacks burst damage. For Secondary, Master Yi has two main options. For pure fighting power, Domination works extremely well. Eyeball Collection and Ravenous Hunter are going to be the standard choices, especially since Ravenous works with all of your on-hit damage. I also see some high elo Master Yi's running Relentless Hunter, 
Just keep in mind this does not scale nearly as well and is used to try and snowball the game. If you want a more utility based setup, the Inspiration Tree is a solid choice as well. Magical Footwear, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight are going to be your options, which really just depend on your preference. Now if you want to play the Lethality Burst build, Hail of Blades is going to be the go-to keystone option. It allows you to quickly get 3 autos out, dealing maximum burst damage. To close out the Domination page, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and either Ravenous or Relentless Hunter are going to be the standard choices. For Secondary, Precision with Triumph and Legend Alacrity is by far the most consistent choice, giving you some needed sustain on takedowns and some extra attack speed. It's also important to mention Summoner spells. Although Flash is by far the most consistent choice, Ignite can be a strong pickup into dueling matchups such as Olaf and Viego, who really rely on sustain to win fights. For Rune Shards, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or Magic Resist, depending on your jungle matchup, are going to be the standard choices. Now that we've covered runes, let's talk item builds. To start, both Red Smite and Blue Smite are going to be viable options. Red Smite is a better dueling tool into tankier team comps, while Blue Smite is a better assassination option, mostly run with the Lethality build. For boots, plated steel caps into heavy AD auto attack based teams, merc treads against heavy crowd control, and in cases where you don't need the defensive stats and need extra attack speed for the burst build, Berserker's Greaves can work as well. Now for Mythics, Kraken Slayer is the most standard option used in the on-hit DPS build to just deal insane damage. In rare cases where the enemy team has tons of burst, Shield Bow can also be a good replacement for some extra survivability. If you're running the Hail of Blades page against a full squishy team, Duskblade of Drakthar is going to be your best mythic choice. This gives you a ton of upfront damage, along with the fact that you become invisible after every kill, making it extremely frustrating to play against. Now for core items, since there are two different builds, we'll discuss them separately. When running Lethal Tempo, Gwinsu's Rage Blade, Wit's End, Death's Dance, Starax Gage, and Blade of the Ruin King are going to be your staple items. Gwinsu's is a must, followed by the item that suits the current game best. This means building as much damage as possible, followed by defensive stats for some extra survivability. When running Hail of Blades, The Collector, Essence Reaver, Lord Dominic's Regards, and Yomu's Ghost Blade are the most solid options. This build has one goal, which is to just kill your targets as quickly as possible for more resets. Keep in mind that this build usually ends off in crit items such as Infinity Edge, so always keep your crit chance in mind. Master Yi does not have insane item diversity, so knowing at what point you should be building each item is the most important part. Keeping things flexible and changing your builds based on what's best for the current game will make a huge difference in your results on Yi. Now let's hop right into Yi's general jungle strategy and pathing. Although his clearing is quite simple, there are still some small tips to increase your efficiency. First is to always auto attack camps before using Q. This is a small tip that will make a very big difference, especially in the early game. On top of this, you can use your W to auto attack reset when you're not planning on fighting anytime soon. Just keep in mind that your W has a very long cooldown and using it for an auto attack reset before getting into combat is definitely not worth it. To build on this, Master Yi really relies on his Q to pull off successful ganks early. When wrapping behind enemies for ganks, sometimes the best strategy is to lead with a red buff auto attack, applying the slow, and then baiting them to flash or dash away. Once they use their mobility spell, then following with Q will be much more effective. This also goes for using your Q to dodge key skill shots and abilities, since this can make a massive difference. Examples of this are saving Q to dodge Gragas E, Vi Q, and even Nidalee Spears if you have quick reactions. On the topic of Master Yi's Q, it's actually a fantastic tower diving tool, which is quite underrated. Simply draw tower aggro, output as much damage as you can before dying, and then use Q to drop the aggro. You can also use Alpha Strike to dodge Dragon Pushback, Rift Herald Swipe, and even auto attacks from your camps if timed correctly. Lastly would be saving your W for the right moment in fights. Your Meditate is a simple ability, but the correct timing makes a world of difference. Remember that CC can cancel you, so when fighting against champs like Gragas, make sure to bait out their CC spells first before you try to meditate up. Now for actual jungle roots, Master Yi actually has quite a few solid options. The most common would be the safe full clear route, which is mainly used against strong early game junglers or in games with not many gank options. 
simply full clear towards your desired side of the map, putting two points into Q at level 3, then going for Scuttle after you hit level 4. The middle ground between full farming and being aggressive is the 4 or 5 camp clear. This is mainly used when you see a potential gank or invade opportunity arise and want to get onto the map quicker. Just keep in mind that Master Yi really wants to farm up and get items, so doing this with no solid game plan can leave you very far behind if not done well. And lastly is a level 2 gank or invade which is surprisingly effective. Master Yi has a pretty strong level 2 which can be used to cheese early ganks or invades against overextended laners or weak enemy junglers. Again I want to repeat this is a very risky path and knowing when to do it comes with time but it's definitely a viable strategy. In general, Master Yi thrives when you can farm up to level 6 and start scaling with items so that should be your main priority in the early game. Farming your camps on cooldown and rushing objectives is going to be your ticket to success in the first couple levels. Master Yi's biggest weakness is definitely that heavy CC and burst can make playing him very difficult. Since you're reliant on spamming auto attacks, champions such as Leona, Lulu, Malzahar and Pantheon who all have point and click crowd control will make your life hell. This means any small mistake will leave you stun locked and bursted. To build on this, Master Yi struggles into junglers such as Elise, Rek'Sai, Kha'Zix and Fiddlesticks for this exact reason. These champs all have the ability to CC you or deal massive burst damage which is Yi's main weakness. Master Yi also suffers from having no utility or CC himself, which means he's very item reliant to have impact on the game. This is why it's so crucial to maximize your gold early game, falling behind will mean your team is basically playing 4v5 with a melee minion. Lastly, Yi does tend to struggle in the higher elo brackets. He's a very strong pick until around high diamond or master tier, but masters plus is where you start running into problems where players are much more knowledgeable on how to shut you down and how to punish your weaknesses. And finally, let's discuss what makes Master Yi such a terror to play against. First off, Yi is a very simple champion whose kit is easy to understand. This makes him a great pick in low elo since he's not hard to play at a decent level. If I were to recommend one champion to new jungle players looking to climb, I would probably recommend Master Yi first. Next up, Master Yi is phenomenal against squishy champions who rely on kiting to be useful. Examples of this are Kindred, Lilia, Nidalee, and Ivern, who all get absolutely mowed down if they get anywhere near you. This also goes for champions such as Ash, who rely on slows from long range to keep you off them. When you pop ult and have immunity against slows, Ash will not have a fun time escaping from you. Master Yi also has one of the highest carry potentials in the entire game. When he gets items, it is absolute free low. Playing versus a fed Master Yi is one of the most frustrating feelings since you can instantly delete everyone on the team no matter how tanky they are, becoming untargetable and also sustaining up in the process. I feel like Master Yi gets a bad rap in the league community. Although he's not a mechanically intensive champ, learning how to play his all or nothing carry playstyle is still a skill in itself. If you're looking for a powerful dueling champion that has massive carry potential when played with some finesse, Master Yi is definitely the pick for you. That will do it for my Season 12 in-depth guide on Master Yi Jungle. If you want to support my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to keep up with my weekly uploads. Most people who watch are not subbed and any extra support really helps my channel grow. If you have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll be giving away free coaching sessions every month to members of the Discord, so be sure to click the link in the description if you're interested. With all that being said, thanks again for watching. Until the next video, peace out.